What's up? My name is Brandon, and today I want to talk about why I regret upgrading my camera gear. So some of y'all may not know this, but I used to own a Canon R6 Mark II. This was my primary workhorse for the last year, and it was a fantastic camera and performed well at pretty much anything that I threw at it. My primary line of work was conferences, corporate events, and weddings. And to those of you who are familiar in those fields, a lot of the times these are run and gun situations, meaning you don't really have time to set up lights, stands, boom, all of those fancy things that you want to do to create the best image and sound possible. You kind of get a feel for what the surrounding area is like, how the light is reacting to what, and you just need to work with what is given to you. A lot of times you're just running around with the camera and whatever looks best at that time, you are just there to set it up, capture it, and move on to the next scene. This was the camera that I upgraded to, the R6 Mark II. This was just a decision I made last year and prior to that, I had a crop sensor camera. And at that time, I had these limiting beliefs that I needed to upgrade in order to upgrade into anything else that I did, whether that was my career, that will upgrade the image quality, the look, more bokeh, all of those things I believed would level me up in my career. That was the message that I wanted to share with y'all today. It's easy to look at other people's equipment or what they're doing and for some reason thinking that having this one thing, having this one camera, having this one lens, having this one piece of equipment will make you either better or just make all things perfect. And yes, you can finally be that filmmaker, that freelancer, that videographer that you want to be. That isn't the case. And I just want to reiterate that throughout today's video. Not only is this hurting you as a creative, but also your wallet and how you think and how you view yourself because you may not meet those expectations once you get that new camera or that new lens. And again, this is not to bash the camera that I had. The R6 Mark II performed perfectly, like almost flawless. Yes, every camera has its own quirks and some are better than others better. But in my experience with the last year shooting with this camera, there was something that I just couldn't get over. Though it performed so good in all these scenarios I put it in, I found myself not using the camera for my own personal projects and I just never really had fun with it. And the camera I had previously, I would actually go out there, shoot projects, do my own photos, just make my own things and make more content. <laughs> I think in this last year, I only made three, four videos with my new camera. And with the camera I had previously, I made double or triple times the more content with the old camera I had versus the new one. I was just trying to figure out what it was. Why was this happening? and it ultimately boiled down to my experience with the camera. I just wasn't with it. I think once you find that style you like shooting in and you touch something else, you're not inspired with these lenses, you're not inspired with the camera. So what does that call for? For change. And the first thing I looked for, honestly, was my old camera that I had. And some of y'all that were here on the channel before I made the switch, I was on a Fujifilm X-T4 and that camera I absolutely loved. Yes, it had its downsides and its quirks. Autofocus, not so great, but the image and the feeling that you know you are in control of that camera, I absolutely loved it. And I would go out and shoot with it all the time. And so I, did it. <laughs> kind of. Uh, this right here is a Fujifilm X-T3. Now some of you may be thinking, uh, Brandon, 
didn't you just downgrade like super hard? You lost your autofocus and you're not on the X-T4, you're on the X-T3, which is a generation below with what you had prior to the R6 Mark II. And to that I say, well, to me, I don't think it's a downgrade. Maybe to some of y'all, yes, but the image is still awesome on this thing. And what I miss the most from the experience is photography. This camera is what made me fall in love with photography. And just on the Canon, I didn't really find it too fun or inspiring to shoot at all. It made it super easy to, don't get me wrong, like the shooting experience on the Canon is amazing. Autofocus, solid, aim wherever you put it, you just get it right. But I never really found myself using it outside of work. With this here, I wanted to aim to have a better experience and reconnect with that feeling I had when I fell in love with photography. And right as I got it, I just knew like the back of my hand, the different tactile feelings on the buttons, the aperture ring, the focus ring. These things I was familiar with, and I'm gonna be honest with you guys, when I was selling off my Fuji gear, I kept my X lenses because I just had a feeling that I would come back. Being on full frame for a year, yes, it has its upsides and all these different things, but I don't think the difference is as big as people pointed out, at least what I thought. You know, it's easy to be influenced on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Oh, full frame this, full frame that, it'll look better, it'll... It's easy to fall in all those different traps if you're not paying attention. These are modern cameras. It's really hard to make these look bad. Of course, if you don't know what you're doing, it's not gonna look good. Okay, Brandon, so that's great and all that now you have a photography camera you love, but this thing doesn't have IBIS, autofocus isn't that great, and you do run and gun work. So now what are you using for video? And just because I chose a camera that was a generation behind, I was able to save some money and actually choose a different choice for my video camera. And that is the Sony FX30. Okay, Brandon, now you lost me. You now have two different systems when you could have just stuck to one. What is the deal here? Now, the reason why I chose Sony is because I know I could rely on its video features and its video autofocus. I know that the FX30 is a video-centric camera and that's why I chose it, because I want my career to steer in more of the videography and cinematography direction. And having this Fuji, this will be my fun photography camera because that's honestly what I miss the most in my experience. And this just might be my opinion, but grading S-Log and F-Log, they are very similar. So if I were to ever do any projects and I need a B-cam, I know that that can match these two and it'll look the same. And most of the time being run and gun, I only use one camera and if I were to do an interview setup, I was just thinking, hey, I can use this, manual focus is fine, and I'll just have this as a safety angle. And most of the time for those kind of shots, you really don't need autofocus. So those of you who have a system that they've been on for years, you love what you have, you enjoy the tools that you use at your disposal, but you're kind of looking over the other way, I really encourage you to hold on to the first love for whatever passion that it is because in my case i made that mistake with having the xt4 everything that i did the images i would make all that effort i would put into what it was i was in love with that process and the tool that came with it and it just wasn't necessary for me to look the other way just because others that worked in that field that i did had full frame or had this system. This clouded my creativity and made me think that I needed this one thing in order to achieve another. When in reality, what I had was already capable of that. Another big mistake I made while searching for the upgrade was that I knew that I was going to choose the Sony a7 IV 
because I knew at that time I liked the line of lenses that Sony had and there was also third party options if I so chose. And it just so happens I'm shooting on a Sigma. And at that time I knew that Canon was just closing their doors to third parties just at the time I was going to purchase the a7 IV, the R6 Mark II came out. And I looked at the specs and comparing it to the a7 IV, the prices were just about the same. And I saw that it had 4K60 with no crop. And the a7 IV had 4K60 with crop. And just that one spec alone, I just saw that and instantly I was like, okay, Canon, take my money and that was a big mistake that I made because I did not look at their lens lineup I just was thinking okay well you know I can just buy RF lenses whatever like I know that they'll have some sort of equivalent and I can always just get EF right I wasn't really too happy about doing that and as I started to learn more about what Canon was doing to third-party companies I started to not feel as connected with the brand and I didn't feel like investing into any Canon glass anymore. Once Canon cut off their EF mount, it just made it that much more harder for me to invest in EF glass. This was another big point that I really wanted to make was choose your camera body based off of the lenses you are going to choose, not the other way around or you would make the same mistake that I did. And me being on a RF body meant that I could only choose RF glass. I wanted native glass and being limited to those options was my fault because I didn't want to look at the options that I had. Versus when I was going to purchase the a7 IV, I already knew what lenses I was going to get. I let one spec on a camera body change my mind. And I just don't want you guys to make the same mistake that I did. So yeah, that's why I regret upgrading my camera gear. To now only downgrade. But in reality, it's what you make out of it. And to me, this is going to be an upgrade. Through experience and overall, if the goal is for you to shoot and refuel the passion, I don't think specs really do matter, right? It's the tool that you're going to use and get you actually out there and putting it in action. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope today's message really rung with some of y'all. I know that there are others out there that are just looking into getting a new system or just new gear in general. And you may know someone that's in the same boat and you may wanna send them this video because you see what they got going on over there and you're like, oh, pff, dude, you got the good stuff chill on the finances <laughs> hope that y'all enjoyed today's message if you did please leave me a like and i hope to see you next time peace